modify HOSTAC. And the point that I want to actually make first is the live versus dead space in this offense. The two that we've already talked about, we saw that there were pretty significant areas of dead space, either in the middle of the field for the vert stack or on either sideline with the um, split stack. But the only area of dead space that should be in this offense is this sideline right here, which gives you the middle and also this whole line and basically this whole part of the field to work with. So that's something that's a real advantage of this modified host stack. Um, other advantages that, oh yeah, so let's just talk about how it cycles first so that you guys get an idea of how that goes. So really, we're talking about these two strong players. Um, and let's have a flick mark here. So really, the first look is always going to be a break from this lady right here. So she's going to go break like that. Um, her, her buddy in the middle is reading off of her, going out, and as soon as she's out of the way, can come back under to receive the disc here, which is um, awesome. So we have our two options that we always want to have. We really have an additional option here. If this is a strong thrower, which it undoubtedly will be, this girl could just keep going, especially if her defender doesn't come with her. Um, so let's talk about cycling in case the disc is on the <coughs> other side of the field. So say these two are working really hard, but they still can't get open. Um, the handlers see that and realize that and know that they need to do a reset. And the reset ends up over here on this side of the field. So here's the disc. Whatever the mark is doing, um, we're going to do a very similar thing to one side of the split stack, which is the IO cut, and then this um, player is reading off this one again, and at the same time as the eye is going, they're making some kind of fake out where they can either come straight under, depending on what the force is doing, or here. Um, and so those are the options. So let's talk about one more thing with cycling, and that's that if this person is over here, this one's out here, this side of the field is starting to look pretty crowded, and this side is starting to look pretty empty. So this person is going to help out by looking to be the continuation for this one right here. And so what she's going to do is go out and then make a decision. So if this is a strong thrower, maybe she's going to go out and just take it into the end zone. If this is maybe not as strong as a th of a thrower, um, or if the cut from the handler, the pop and drop isn't coming right away, then she might decide to come back under and receive the disc here. So this person comes here. Mm, so many arrows. <laughs> this person has cleared to this side, this one's out here, and this one is working in the middle. So essentially we've then isolated these second two people. Um, so this is going to be an advantage if we have number one strong throwers, because all of these people <coughs> need to be able to break the mark, um, and probably throw long throws as well. Um, and if we have two people, at least two people, but hopefully all of these people willing to really work hard. Because I think the only way that this offense is going to work is if we keep the space open. So if you cut here and you're not open and you just hang out and you're not clearing, then that's going to be a problem. So really, all four of these have to be willing to work in this offense. Um, disadvantages would be if a defense really picks up on what we're doing and realizes that these two are isolated and maybe these two aren't quite doing as much at first, that they put another somebody out here either over or under. And that could be really detrimental to this offense. Um, so in terms of drills, I think probably the best way to do it would just be to isolate like sets of people at a time, like these three and these three, and just practice that. I, if you guys have any other suggestions, I'm open to it. 